Who's your daddy? Look like your daddy's the devil. <laughs> we are going to Isaiah 14. We're only reading verse. Let me see. We're going to read verse 11 all the way to 15. And if the Lord leads me to read any further, I will. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Remember that word, weaken. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. We have to be aware of many things. If you are driving down the street, one of my examples, if you're driving down the street, what you're going to realize is you have to, number one, know how to operate that car. You have to know the laws of the road. You also have to drive defensively and be aware of everything around you. For example, when my father taught me to drive, he used to tell me, if you see a person sitting in a parked car, do not stay as close to that car as you are the other empty cars. Why? Give them a little more of a wide berth. Why? Because if a person is in the car, they're apt to pull out in front of you or they're apt to open the door while you're driving by. And if you're too close, you will get the ticket. You can get sued for clipping a parked car, even though they're the ones that opened the door while you were coming. So you have to be aware. I'm just using that as an example. You have to be aware of everything that's happening on the road. You have to have eyes in the back of your head. That's why they created rear view mirrors. You have. I have avoided accidents, seeing a car barreling on me, getting ready to sideswipe me. And I got out of the way just enough for them not to hit me because their eyes were not on the road and they swerved out of their lane. God will help you see things coming. He will protect you from dangers, seen and unseen. But you must open your eyes and look. When they teach you to cross the street, you look to the left, you look to the right, but you look. You make sure, even though the light's green, it doesn't mean it's safe for you to cross. You, it's up to you to look. And one of the things we're not aware of, a lot of us as Christians are blinded. We live a willfully blinded life to Lucifer, Satan. And we don't get that that is not the way God wants us to live our lives. Do -do 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 -do. Where do I go? What do I do? Woo! I'm having fun. Oh, whoopee. Verse 12 again, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? See, one of the things that the assignments of, of, of the devil's workers, which are demons and people, is to wear out the saints. When you find yourself feeling worn out, you find yourself feeling encumbered, heavy laden. You find yourself feeling like, stop the world, I want to jump off. You have to understand that's the assignment of the enemy. 
You have to look at the characteristics of Satan. You have to know, you see, oh boy, when you're on the road, you have to know how good drivers drive and you have to know, you have to be prepared for the dum diddy dum dums out there on the road that don't have a clue. Their brains are up in the clouds. They're on the cell phones. They're operating under the influence of medication, drugs, or alcohol. They're operating under the influence of anger, wrath, and temper tantrums. No matter what, they're operating under some influence. You have to be prepared to respond and, and, and be defensive in your driving so that you're not taken by surprise. You can see, oh, that woman's going to run the, the stop sign. Her head is in the phone. That person is going to run the light. They're not paying attention. They're in too much of a hurry. That person is going to pull out in traffic without looking. Let me hit my brakes now. You can see it coming if you live an aware life. But you have to stay aware. And you must know how your enemy works so that you can be prepared and see trouble down the road. When I took bus driving training in the school buses before I drove for the city, in the school bus, the woman taught us. It was the most amazing lesson in driving I had learned. She taught us to look down the road in the freeway. She said, if you see a bunch of brake lights hitting way up the road, see if you see any ambulance lights, anything going on. If it looks like it's all going to be blocked up, find the next exit, get off and get past that, drive through the city until you pass that blockage, get back on the freeway. But if you're looking at the car right in front of you, you're not ready for what's happening and you're going to be sitting there with the rest of the population stuck in traffic for two, three, four hours because you're not looking down the road. And some of you need to look. You need to look to your right, to your left, look straight ahead, and look behind. Eyes have to be moving at all times. That way, you're prepared when the devil is getting ready to lay a snare. You recognize it. Why do you recognize it? You have read the manual. And the manual teaches you how to drive defensively. God's manual teaches you how to drive how to live, how to live in a safe, at a safe level under his protection in the ark of safety. And a lot of us get taken and swept by the wiles of the devil because number one, we're not paying attention. Number two, we're given to the whims of our flesh. Number three, we're leaning to our own understanding and by the dictates of our emotional things that are going on in us. And we want to look at a pile of dung and call it chocolate pudding, and that's not what it is. And we want to eat it, hoping it tastes like chocolate pudding, because that's what we want, chocolate pudding. But what Satan is saying to you while you got the spoon coming to your mouth, that's right, baby, go on, eat, 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 eat. Yeah. Now, that's how people get hooked on drugs. That's how people get into a pedophilia. That's how people get in relationships where people are pun use them as a punching bag. And that's why they can't let go, even though it's an extremely painful existence. That's why people get hooked on gambling. That's why people get hooked on drugs. Any kind of addiction, whether it's to a substance, to a person, to an activity, pornography, gambling, whatever, any kind of addiction, even if it's to soap operas on TV, it's demonic. There's so much more in this world that is happening from the demonic realm. Satan is the prince of the air. The media comes over the airwaves. The cell phones over the airwaves. All of these movies, all of the things that you look around, 
over the airwaves, the power of suggestion. Subliminal messages coming at you left and right, front, back, up and beneath. Coming all over the place. You wonder why people are so jacked up, tore up from the floor, why they have the can't help us, why they get locked in and can't just open the door and walk away. It's a demonic stronghold in the air. The spirit of addiction. If you look at the characteristics of Satan, the Bible refers to Satan as uh, the, the, uh, being of all subtlety. Subtlety is an underhandedness, and an unclear way of doing things so that people can't quite put their finger on what's wrong. That's a subtlety. Looking at, he calls him the, the father of lies. And you look at all the lies that the devil tells you. That man hits you that way because he loves you and he doesn't know how to express love. So you have to be with him and help him through his trauma. No, that's a lie from the pit. God didn't call you to be anybody's punching bag, no matter what their hang up is. It ain't your job to heal anybody. That's God's job. You get the heck out of Dodge. That man can't keep his hands to himself. Tell him, play with yourself while you hit the door, while you hit the road. And you get your heels to click it and get out of there. See, a lot of times we don't know how the enemy operates. And I'm going to read Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, to start at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand again, <clears throat> against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Where, uh, wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The problem with most born-again Christians walking with God, reading the word, praying, is that we're not watchful. We're not paying attention. We're not aware that something's about to go down. We're not aware. We're not knowledgeable or we're just not aware of Satan's devices. So we get duped so easily. We don't recognize. See, there are times when we walk with the Lord, we can recognize the hand of God. Oh, I see the hand of God on this. Oh, this is God all the way through. This is God. But what we don't recognize is the hand of Satan. The hand of Lucifer, the hand of the demons working, manipulating, conniving, conjuring up all kind of crap, hindering, blocking, binding. Scaring, intimidating, controlling. You don't realize that a lot of what you're dealing with in your lives is the work of Satan, the hand of Satan. Because he comes to do what in our lives? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. As Lynn so, so eloquently says it. Satan is not your friend. So you can buddy up with him all you want. You can sleep with the enemy all you want. You can hang with your homie all you want. But I'm going to tell you, he ain't your homie. He ain't your friend. He ain't your partner. Yeah. He's your enemy. Now I'm trying to break it down and keep it. I'm doing loose paraphrases and and descriptions that really bring it down to earth. 
because I know a lot of y'all don't even read the Bible. A lot of y'all don't even talk to God. You don't spend enough time with God to really be taught spiritual warfare. But you have to learn that walking with Jesus is not just to get out of hell free card. You have got to understand there's power in that name. And you have to also remember God is the creator. He wanted us to have the freedom of choice, which means in order to choose, you must have two opposites to choose from, good and evil. Your choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to buddy up with? Who are you going to collaborate with? Huh? Who are you, who you going to partner up with with your business ideas, your schemes, your goals, your aspirations? Which route are you going to take to rise to the top? You're going to go by the road of lies, cheating, manipulating, intimidating. What are you going to do? You have to decide. You have to decide which route. See, to whom you yield your members to, that's who you're obeying. Whoever your father is, it's the one you obey. So you have to decide who's your daddy. Who's your daddy? Is it Satan or is it God? Who's your daddy? What door are you going to walk through? The door of sin or the door of righteousness through Jesus Christ? Which one are you going to walk through? You can play games and tiddlywinks with life all you want. You can excuse and rationalize all you want. But let me tell you something, baby cakes. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So playtime is over. Time to get back to class. Get back to brass tacks. Get back to work. Lunch break is over, y'all. You have to decide which way you're going. A lot of you don't want to hear it. A lot of you, you're grown. You're three times seven. You've been on this planet long enough to know some things. But I'm going to tell you, the more you think you know, honestly, the less you know. Because the problem with what you know is you're leaning on that. And I'm going to tell you this and you're not going to want to hear it. But human brains have been gifted with a pea brain. I don't care how many doctorates you have behind your name. You got a pea brain if you're not leaning on God. You got a pea brain if you're not calling on the wisdom of God. You got a pea brain. You're stuck on stupid if you think you got this in. Yeah, you got this going on. You you handling this. No, you're not handling anything. Satan is handling you, baby. He's the puppeteer. You're the puppet. And the sad part is you don't even see what's going on because you can't see what's in invisible. You can't see his hand working against you. Some of you, you sit there with your kids. I mean, this, I don't know where this message is going. Some of you sit with your kids and you smoke dope in front of them and then you let them smoke dope and you drink in front of them and you let them drink. You have sex in front of them and then you let them participate in the sex. You think it's okay. That's an abomination to God. You live a lifestyle that is cursed and you're cursing your kids. You're cursing your loved one. You're cursing your own destiny. So what I want you to think about is how Satan works. Let's look at some definitions because you need to be aware of his devices. That's the sad part. Many of us are not aware of his devices. A lot of you don't understand. Satan is sly, slick, and wicked. And you think it's okay because it's mischief. And mischief 
for many of you, is fun. It's funny. You get a good kick out of it. You get a laugh out of it. Anytime you have underhanded ways, anytime you live a life based on lie after lie after lie after lie after lie, baby, Satan is your daddy. You want to know who's your daddy? Satan is your daddy. Anytime you live a life of selfishness, self-centeredness, it's all about me, 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 myself, and I, gimme, 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 my name is Jimmy, all of that, characteristics of Satan. Anytime you must be controlling and manipulative over another person, you're going to make them do what you want them to do. You're going to make them think how you want them to think. You're going to make them come up with what you want them to come up with. You're going to force them against their own will. They're going to love you even if it kills them, because if they don't love you, you're going to kill them. That's straight from hell. Your daddy is Satan. You're going to force your wife to, to get in the bed with you and, and part those legs, whether she wants to be bothered with you or not. That's straight from Satan. That's not godly. That definitely is not from love. See, a lot of us operate under the unction of Satan and don't know it. You walk around talking about, I'm filled with the spirit. I feel the spirit in my bones. Yeah. Hmm. No, you feeling the devil, baby. Some of y'all will cuss somebody out in a New York minute, and you won't run out of cuss words doing it. And no, you won't feel bad about it. You'll feel proud about it. Yeah, I told them. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I called them a this and I called them a that. And I did it in front of their whole family. Boy, they looked like they felt that small. I loved every minute of it. How are you going to love every minute of that? Your daddy's Satan. You sitting up there doing a business deal with this one, that one, the other one, and you cheating and lying and doing all kinds of schemes to get as much money from these people as possible. You don't care what it does to them. You don't care the consequences. You don't care the prices they have to pay. You don't care how it can destroy their future. You thinking about your pockets, baby. Yeah, you gonna lie in your pockets by any means necessary. Your daddy's Satan. You're going to get rich. You're going to uh, flood the neighborhoods with drugs and alcohol so you can get rich. You're going to hire all kind of uh, dope dealers and all kind of pimps and all kind of, of human trafficking leaders. Your daddy is the devil. And you are akin to him. Satan is out here manipulating society like never before. You sitting up here, you believe in the ways of God, you believe in God's word, you believe in righteousness, and then somebody in your family turns a corner. And all of a sudden, your standards change because your son or your daughter has changed in a direction you know is diametrically opposed to the biblical teaching. But you love them, so you change and lower your standards. Because you love them, there's no way you could see God judging them because they're your baby. That doesn't make wrong right and right wrong. You're wrong. And I'm not trying to be hard. What I'm saying is when you give up your God standards for what is comfortable for you, for them, to be eye pleasers, man pleasers, to have convenience in your life, to prosper in your life, and you will do everything Satan's way and against the ways of God because it's more convenient for you, because you see yourself benefiting more by any means necessary. And it doesn't bother you? Oh, yeah, baby, your daddy's Satan. Because anything that bothers God should bother you. Even if you don't know the word, if it doesn't sit right with God and you're filled with his spirit, oh, it ought to bother you, baby. If sin does not bother you, hmm, check who your daddy is. You better go back and check your birth certificate. Your daddy may not be the one you think he is. 
you can go to bed on Friday night mm -hmm, with that other lover and get up on Saturday or Sunday and go to church and raise holy hands. Your hands might not be all that holy. You better check who your daddy is. See, one of the things that we lack in this society is the fear of God. We don't hunger and thirst after righteousness. We don't delight ourselves in the Lord. We delight ourselves in our flesh. Yeah, baby. As I was talking to somebody on the phone, expressing the same thought. Remember the old song? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we don't realize how much we have bought into the world system. We don't realize how things don't bother us. You can sit through a movie where there's cussing after cussing after cussing and GD, 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 and you're not bothered by that. It doesn't ruffle your feathers. You don't sit up and say, okay, that's enough of this crap. Let me watch something else. I don't want to hear all that mess. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there talking in tongues one minute and listening to movies loaded, loaded with blasphemy the next. And you're, you're cool with it. It's just a movie. We have lowered our standards so much that we're not sense, we have been desensitized to righteousness. We have bought into the devil's lies. What does the devil do? He lies, he manipulates, he intimidates, he scares, he worries, he brings pressure, anxiety, sickness, frustration, all the negative emotions you can come up with. And it's one thing to feel the emotion. It's another one to act on the emotion and follow the emotional road that it wants to take you down. Somebody offends you on your job. You got to get them told. You can't just let it lie. They're not going to put egg on my face in front of everybody. No, no, we're going to handle this. And you go and handle it. Yeah, you handle it all right. You make a, an anthill into a mountain. A messy mountain of mess. Chaos, confusion, strife. And you think you're representing yourself boldly. No, you're misrepresenting who you say your daddy is. So number one, you got to know who your daddy is. And number two, you got to know who the devil is. Because if you really know your daddy, who's supposed to be God, you know who God is. You learn about him. You learn his ways. But when you don't know, what does God say about the lack of knowledge? Mm -hmm. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And a lot of you reject knowledge. Somebody tries to tell you what's right, you don't want to hear it. Somebody tries to give you godly counsel, there's safety in the multitude of counselors. But you don't want to hear it. God can keep you, but that's a dangerous place to be. You walk around thinking because you're grown. Somebody says, I had a dream about you. You need to watch out for this, that, or the other. A lot of you people get caught up in relationships. Your mother and father been trying to warn you. I remember when my father used to, he could look at a guy and boom, 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 size him up in, a, in, in two seconds flat. He could tell me his history. Never met the guy. Don't even know his name. Took one look at him and, and, and got him paid. And I would tell my father, you know, you get on my nerves. You always end up being right. 
and he'd crack up laughing because he'd be so glad that I really listened, even though I was debating the whole time. You got to listen when people try to tell you stuff. Because there, see, there are times when, per, when people are trying to teach you, they've been down that road. They know what's happening there. You don't. They know the tricks. I remember my father, he didn't know what they called him. But he said, if any kid wants to roll up those homemade uh, cigarettes, he didn't call them a joint. He knew what they were, but he was trying to put it in my level so I'd understand. Hey, roll up a homemade cigarette. Don't smoke it, Patty. You want to try a cigarette, you come ask me. You don't get it from your friends. I knew, you know, as an adult, I knew he was telling me not to get high off of, you know, weed and all that other crap they put. He'd tell me you go to a party. Don't let them, you know, don't drink that, that uh, punch. It could be spiked with stuff. I listened to my father, but I'm going to tell you, because he warned me, I was aware. I could see when I was in a position where I could be gang raped. I could see it coming because he warned me what the scenario, what the setup looked like. I didn't go in with my eyes closed. I didn't go in unaware. So I was able to get out of it before any harm was done. Because I was told. Are you listening to your father, God, or are you listening to the devil, to Lucifer? Are you listening to the demons? They suggest something and you say, yeah, yeah, I need that. Yeah, yeah. Are you listening? Who are you listening to? Whose advice are you taking? You will live a life of safety and peace. Safety, peace, security, spiritual prosperity, or you will live a life of chaos, confusion, strife, fear, consequence after consequence after consequence, all kind of confusion, all kind of topsy-turvy, storms brewing here. You sow to the wind, as the Bible says. You will reap the whirlwind. You got to decide, are you going to sow into righteousness? Or are you going to sow standing on the rock? Or are you going to sow to the wind? You got to know who Satan is to know what to avoid. When people try to lie to you, they try to use you for money. They try to get you to do all kinds of favors. Every time they're around you, they need you to do this. They need you to do that. They need you to do the other. Uh, can you do me a favor? Or can you lend me a hundred bucks? I'll pay you back next year. You know you ain't getting it back. But you have to be aware. You can take the horn. You can take life by the horns. Or let life drag you around by the tail. Wherever it wants to take you. And you end up being a victim. And you end up playing the fool. Satan's fool. Then when you end up pregnant, when you end up with a, uh, uh, different types of consequences in your life, you end up doing time in prison. You end up getting pulled over by the police because of who you hang with, what you're doing with who you hang with. Do you know people do time in prison? Satan sets it up. He sets up the scenario where you cross the paths of people who are assignment straight from hell and they're aimed at you. And what does Satan do? He makes the connection and then he lets his demons take over from there. And they work behind the scenes on the people that you're connected with. And the stage is set. And Satan's trying to send words of warning all along the way. But you're not listening because you're having fun. You lean into your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Then when you hear the judge hit that anvil and say 10 years to life or 15 years to life or 25 years to life. And you're standing there in shock because you didn't have anything to do with the crime, but you were in the car with the people who were doing the crime. 
and they wanted you to be their lookout person and you were too afraid to get out the car and walk away. Mm -hmm. See, all of those are ways that Satan pulls us down and we hand him the keys willingly to do it with. Satan, as Lynn says, is not your friend. And anybody working under the influence of Satan is not your friend. Quit going for the okie doke, y'all. Aren't you tired of being raped and sodomized? Aren't you tired of being made a fool? Aren't you tired of being played, being tricked, being duped, bamboozled? Aren't you tired of it? Open your eyes and look around. Ask God to make you see what you need to see. Ask God to make you hear what you need to hear. Ask God to make you aware of what you're not aware of. Then obey. When he gives you warning, obey. All right. I'm going to stop there. One other thing, let me say this. This is on my mind too. Satan will keep you where he wants to destroy you if you allow yourself to be kept, if you, if you allow yourself to be controlled, if you allow yourself to be intimidated by fear and all, all the what ifs that he throws in your head. What if this goes wrong? What if that doesn't work? What? Hey, God is not a man that he should lie. You get a word from God, you run with it, baby. Because Satan will do everything in the world to hinder you. Don't let him. Amen? All right. As I, as I was saying earlier, obedience is better than sacrifice. So whatever you do, obey God and ignore the devil. Whatever you do, please. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>